Hello, hello and welcome to a special festive edition of Wine Blast. My name is Susie Barry, I'm a Master of Wine and I'm joined by my husband, Peter Richards, who's also a Master of Wine, mm. Small World. Mm. Uh, and in the interests of, of full disclosure, is wearing a rather tasteless Christmas jumper. I couldn't help lucky it. Lucky me. I couldn't help it. Lucky you. <laughs> lucky me. <laughs> All my Christmases have come that? at once. How often do you say that in a year? <laughs> um, never. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a problem, it's an issue, it's a seasonal disorder that I have, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got a really fun show coming up, and, and that's why I'm getting into the spirit. You know, we've got the perfect Christmas wreath for winos. We We're have indeed. We have indeed. Um, a really fun thread on the subject of champagne and food, uh, or not. Or not. Mm. Um, which we had. Um, and a delicious interlude about sausage rolls is definitely <laughs> going to be in there. That's definitely my contribution. Uh, and then some, uh, some top wine tips for the festive period, including Pinot Noir, sort uh-huh. of focus on Pinot and alternatives. Yep. Uh, and we've even got our wine of the year. Oh, where to start? Goodness mm, me. What, mm. what should we do? What should we start well, with? Start what should we kick acronym. off with? We're going to make an acronym of wine of the year. Watty. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, excellent. It's the kind of it's the time of year, isn't it, where every wine person uh, champions their Christmas wine recommendations, which is cool. It's they great do. to have. Well, they're very ideas. useful. Very exactly, useful. Exactly, and it's fun. But we want it to be different, like we always do, don't we? And, and so we did our Christmas wine piece via the medium of wreath. <laughs> Just sounds well, weird saying mm, actually, to be honest. I think if, if you mean that we, we kind of stuck a whole load of corks together in a circle and dressed it up with a ribbon, <laughs> yep, I think that's exactly what we did. But yeah. it's hardly a, a, I don't think it's exactly a Christmas recommendation. No, piece. I might be stretching it a bit, a little bit. Um, but, you know, it could be classed if you're feeling generous as a kind of wine review of the year. It could, it you know, could, a sort of a, a wine, our year in wine, a wine, our wine diary. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. In which case, um, it would be slightly concerning, given just how many corks we used to make that wreath. Yeah. It was and, a lot, and, and how many were left over at the end. I know, um, I know. Anyway, I know. just to clarify, it, you know, I think important to say it wasn't like we drank all the wines just to have the corks for the wreath. That would be wrong. It would. But we just. Just generally happen to have quite a few corks hanging around. I suppose it's normal. <laughs> yep. And now we've been they've been put to very good decorative use. Well, exactly. Um, that's, that's upcycling, but, isn't uh, it? But, but let's be fair. It's not exactly as if we can take any credit for this homemade no, that, cork that, wreath, can that we? That's very, very true. Credit where credit's due. Um, I'm not sure she's going to thank you for this. No. <laughs> I still feel morally we should give the credit to, uh, you know, to our daughter for, you know, Respect, massive love <laughs> for her grim Lots of patience. It was grim persistence. It wasn't went it? on and on with the glue it? gun and, 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 and nimble, deft fingers. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. very envious of those. Anyway, she did the whole thing. Yeah, so yeah. thank you, uh, Ted. And, <laughs> and, and it was we've realised. Um, I think it was the most perfect symbiosis of adult and young pastimes, wasn't yeah, yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got the the wine drinking appreciation on the one hand, mm-hmm. and That's then the the craft on the other. Um, Which is with, her job. I, you know, with very satisfying results for everyone. One in the really end, satisfying. I, I would know. say yeah, making something is, I think, the, one of the best things in the world. Now, who it? can we credit with Good this um, this wine wreath? Yeah, idea. We, so we do, yes, yes, we do have to credit Ridge Vineyards, uh, of course, world famous for their sensational Cabernet Sauvignon, aren't they? And Zinfandel and yep. many other things. Uh, we've had a lovely uh, Eric now, uh, Eric Bauer on the program, have, have, haven't we, have. we? So far in, in series one. Um, but but now obviously almost super famous more famous, more famous their, than ever for their wreath action for guides to yeah. making so cork we, exactly so we made we found this guy they'd done a blog on uh, on this hadn't they and I think that uh, we found it um, um, yeah. and, and I think that maybe this is going to overtake their fame as a, as a wine producer yeah, they think? may well indeed so the blog if you're looking for it if you're interested in making a wine wreath a cork wreath in exactly the same way we did the blog is entitled DIY cork wreath plus how to recycle wine corks. Mm. It's sustainability in action, isn't right it? There, right there. And of course, uh, a fun for all the family, if a little <laughs> bit messy for those clearing up afterwards. And just to add that, you know, Ridge's one, the photo they've got on their blog looks way better than ours because it's all just one cork as well, isn't it? It's all just Ridge corks. So that's cool. Oh, and if yeah. you have that many Ridge corks, you're drinking very well. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have enough Ridge corks to <laughs> no, do one didn't. like that. And we didn't have enough champagne corks either, which is good no. because they do say, don't use champagne corks. Mm. But then. Our lovely friends, Vicky and Dave, saw our wreath on Instagram, or our daughter's wreath on Instagram, and said, we've gone one better and done ours with champagne corks this year. Mm. And it is brilliant, the picture they they showed. Um, They obviously, well, we know they do, they live the dream with their champagne lifestyle. So, So that could be a good challenge too. Maybe next year. Yeah. Mind you, I don't need to say that to you. It's like a red rag to a bull, more champagne (laughs) corks. Anyway, I mean, we're going to go bust. (laughs) 
<laughs> we might uh, you can do all of this just to say with with uh, a, a wreath base. I'm not sure what that is. I mean, yeah, but I, can I say that I ordered it from Amazon? No, I shouldn't really. No, there are other providers of wreath bases, um, uh, but it, it was like a straw base that you get that, that's, the, the, that's the ready to add it, to. You, yeah. you, you basically just get loads of corks and glue and stick them on. Glue gun. You've got so to have you a glue the gun. Burlap, the burlap, the burlap, burlap ribbon stuff yeah. underneath, so it looks nice. So, so um, you need a bit of burlap ribbon. You need corks. You need glue and a and a um, wreath to start. Check out Ridge's website. <laughs> You know, it's good for wine goggling as well as anything else. Uh, you know, open a glass of wine and just, I think the, the main challenge is it's not gluing your, your fingers to the wine glass. While That's you're doing very it. important. So you can get someone else to do it. You drink the wine, get someone else to do it. Although, actually, if go. one hand was glued to the glass, it would be yeah, actually, so simple, wouldn't true. it? That's an excuse for life, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on to the fertile, maybe occasionally hostile ground mm. of champagne and food, as promised. So this was a big old discussion we started on Twitter and it was yeah. really quite interesting. So we thought we'd bring it in here. Um, also because it's relevant, obviously, at this mm. time of year for our festivities. Yeah, so, so to provide the context, we were lucky enough, I think is the word, privileged to be involved in, in the most delicious tasting of champagne and food recently. It was, it was Champagne Delamotte, um, maybe not the most famous champagne. House, no, they're Dunham, what, slightly it? under the radar, really. Yeah, but they're, they? they're definitely historic. Um, yeah. 260th anniversary this year. I think yep. they're the fifth oldest champagne house, apparently. Um, and they're very well respected by those in the know. They're the sister house to Salon, which might be a more familiar name. Um, and they focus on Chardonnay. Um, and they're imported to the UK by Corny and Barry. They have Corny and Barry. Barry, <laughs> I've got nothing to do with importing you, Salon or Delamotte, I promise. Your, your I wish I had. Yeah, exactly. We'd have a great. few more bottles Can of Can we rename salad? it Corny and Barry and then just basically say, right, you, we own lots of DRC imports. Now. Oh, anyway, sorry, it. Corny and Barry, uh, so that, who, who do import DRC uh, and Petra, so and very yeah, well. Yeah, and, well, and they're, well, the, just to say, they're actually known or more recently for doing brilliant things with food and champagne true, matching. Um, mm, they mm. did, if you remember, a seminal launch with, with Delamotte and Fish and Chips. Mm. Uh, they even did one, I think, with a full English breakfast. We we yeah. missed that one. No, I did um, that one. You, you, oh, you, you did it? it? You did, did it. it? Oh, oh gosh, yeah. I missed it. Heavens. Yeah. Um, but for this, they outdid themselves, especially in lockdown, by sending out a, a small vertical of their Blanc de Blanc. So, so that's different vintages. Well, there was non-vintage and two different vintages mm. uh, with the most stunning selection of sashimi and seafood from Nobu. Yeah, you were undone, <gasps> weren't you? I... I I was beside myself with joy when I when I saw that that <laughs> package arrive. Oh my goodness! Um, it was heavy. you know, and I think it's also interesting to say that Denimort is especially their Blanc de Blanc is quite a. I mean, how to how to put this? Quite a sort of cerebral. Yeah, that's a good way. Sort of intellectual style, kind it? of grown up style yeah. of champagne. It's not your biggest sort of crowd pleaser, isn't it? They're quite no. sort of fresh and precise and savoury champagnes, not hedonistic blockbusters. You know, they're, they're quite restrained, understated, aren't exactly, they? and it. And one thing I think we just got to definitely need age to come out of themselves. Um, you know, a point that, you know, uh, was illustrated, I think, by when we tasted it. It was the 1999, wasn't it, Blanc yep. Blanc? Sort of late release. I think they call it collection, don't they? Yeah. Um, which we tried as part of this this little vertical. I think it's about £195, so it's, it's not cheap. But it is a nice late release. Um, and it is <laughs> stunning. Nice. Um, and, and funny enough, we realised we'd actually tried that at the cellar when we visited back in... In Champagne. In um, um, 2007. Sort of, yeah, so to, um, well, yeah, the 30. Years and I think ago we now. tried the 1985 at the same time, didn't we? Mm. Which was which was amazing. You know, so sort of refined and delicate, but also really complex. And I but think I that's think a you're right. That, that's the thing that the, their wines age beautifully. Mm. They and then really Salon, do. you can compare Salon because it's sort of you know the sister house. Yeah. When we tried the 88 and the 82, they were amazing. You just, you well, just really. dropping vintage names. I am trying here. to impress you. Just you. Just am, I, am I? Am I impressing you're very, you? I'm, I'm so impressed. I'm really trying. I'm hard. so not quite as impressed as with your Christmas jumper, but I am impressed. But having said that, actually, the 2012 that we tasted um, with this beautiful Nobu food was also tasting great. Oh, yeah, so that's yeah, not that's nearly no, as, as aged yeah, and yeah. that's about £80 a bottle. Yeah. Um, both yeah. of them went amazingly with food. Um, oh, just, yeah. just to slightly talk through, it, it, it probably doesn't mean loads because you need to actually taste the food, but there was a dish called seared salmon kurashi sumizo that, um, yeah. I'm sure that's not pronounced correctly, but it was, was in, it was involving like... some truffle, there was some truffle that's in there, right. it truffle, um, it? but it was, and amazing. it was paired with the, the, the 2012. Um, world, yeah. But we actually, funnily enough, we, we also tasted um, then a king crab salad, didn't we? Mm, mm. And that was paired with the 1999. And, and I think that 
that was because there was parmesan in the crab salad. The, the you know the umami mm, mm. was paired with the slightly older wine, which was obviously a bit more truffly and rich as a wine. You know, mushroomy. Mm. But I we did decide that we kind of preferred it the other way around, didn't, didn't we? we? Yeah, yeah, the seared salmon. But with the, either with the way, the seared salmon with the ninety nine and, the, and, and the, the, the crab truffle. salad with the twenty twelve. But yeah. we're talking little tiny detail here because yeah. it was an amazing taster. They were they were really foodie wines, weren't they? I mean, yeah. It made us it got us thinking, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we should firstly say thank you, Dan. Thank you, Nobu, and an amazing quality. Yeah. Um, but, you know, got us thinking, great champagne, you know, uh, especially great Blanc de Blanc with sushi, sh- sashimi and all kinds of fish, selfish, great food and wine pairing. But, you know, is champagne and food really something that should be pursued? Is it, a, you know, are there great champagne and food matches? Um, and, what about, and, and not just champagne, great traditional methods, sparkling wines in general. Um, you know, should we be putting them with food or should we not? So we asked a question on Twitter. We did. What else would you do? <laughs> <laughs> and that question is as follows. So uh, champagne, best with food or on its own? It's fair to say it can do both. But do you ever set out to put fizz with food? If so, with what? It can be brilliant with smoked fish, for example, which other wines struggle with. But over to you. And that kind of opened the floodgates a little bit, didn't it? It did indeed. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, just, I mean, I think, you know, our take, to be brief, would be that I think... Fizz is often best by itself, isn't it? I think we, yes, we would say that you know, as a just like, general um, in a way, rule. In a funny way, like sweet and fortified, often people rush to put them in food. And you think, no, just enjoy it by itself. Yeah, and It, it is and a drink by itself. It, yes, it is. And, and you know, and good experience. champagne, there's nothing more beautiful. I mean, I think with, with a maybe very, you know, with nice, light, um, not too flavoursome canapes, absolutely. Mm. But I, we love it to kick things off. So, yes, we wouldn't necessarily serve it with food. And I think it can be slightly overdone. I mean, we've yeah, both yeah. Yeah, we've both yeah. been lucky enough to go to Champagne. Mm. We've been entertained in Champagne. But you do tend to find it can happen that you get Champagne served throughout an entire meal. And equally in, in the UK, if, if somebody's doing a, a Champagne mm. Mm. Um, match, uh, tasting and matching with food... They'll serve champagne right through a lunch or Which a dinner. Which is understandable because they're trying to sort of convey what they're talking about. But, but it doesn't it's, it's an experience. Always. It's an enjoyable experience. No. I don't know about you. I always get to a certain point in the meal and I think I am gasping for a red wine. Yes. Yes. You know, I totally um, agree. And you so respect any champagne producer who actually serves you either a white wine or a red wine yeah. somewhere in that And mix. the way to do it is to buy, um, if you're a champagne, is to buy a Bordeaux Chateau or a Burgundy, <laughs> isn't it? Like a few Which there have. are, of course. <laughs> Which there Ones are. Ones that have. But, you know, I mean, and, and we have, I mean, to talk about this, we have done, you know, we've done years of food and wine matching, haven't we? Yeah. Um, you know, 12 years lining up wines alongside dishes on, on Saturday Kitchen or BBC One. You know, so not just the theory of food and wine matching, but the practice too. Often, and this is really important to say, with very surprising results, because sometimes with food and wine, you do the, if you do the theory, you think, oh, this is what... It, actually, sometimes you've got to line up stuff which you don't think will no. go, and you're well, surprised. Exactly. And so I would say, rather than saying that champagne is brilliant throughout an entire meal, not that it doesn't go with probably every course, as long as you've got the right champagne, but you you just get a bit of a fizz overload. What we would say is that it goes very well with foods that are often yeah. quite difficult to match. So mm. smoked fish can be a bit tricky. Um, yeah, we said that. We, you know, uh, yeah. Eggs can sometimes yeah. be tricky. You know, <laughs> if you want your scrambled egg and smoked salmon in the yeah. morning, yeah. a glass of champagne for yeah. breakfast, yeah. why not? Uh, do, we, do, you we not find, do you not remember Marmite? I know you don't like Marmite. I'm, I do. I'm, yes, yeah. But do you know, yeah. I, I, so we, we are tried Marmite that people. thing at, when we were at Denby's, they're, they're, they're Blonde we Noir. We did. Keep it Blonde Noir. And it, it wasn't Marmite, but it was like something that involved yeast extract. It was something with Marmite. Or Marmite. Or sort of, it was like a puff or something. It was something, something it? with it was marmite. A thing, yes, yeah, yeah. But it involved a tiny bit of marmite, and it went really well. It did actually go <laughs> well. I, there we yes, are. I have to confess. Know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But anyway, let's get on to the Twitter replies of, yes. of, 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 of whatnot. So uh, we had some really there, fun, fun replies. So I'll, I'll kick it off. Yeah, George, on. George came straight in with mm. rose and curry. Rose and curry. I think that's a we great just, shout. We should just go. Great shout. Just, just that's a marketing end, campaign. End this isn't whole it? podcast here. <laughs> Rose and curry. Thank you, George. Uh, James went into a bit more detail. He said, Champagne and its traditional method cousins, so thank you for ticking those off, James, because there are many alternatives, uh, are arguably the most versatile of wines in terms of food pairing. Interesting. Mm. Short of a big slab of red meat, I think it will go with almost anything. Currently exploring English sparkling and curry pairing. So a bit like like along George's idea. line. I think it does depend on the curry, but I think absolutely, yes. Yeah, why not? Why mm. not? Mm. Now, Guy of uh, Smith & Evans, Guy yeah. Smith, okay. wrote, Fizz plus fish and chips equals heaven. <sighs> I agree. Let's just have a moment there. But there was lots of there was actually lots of support for that, in, including us, as we said. Um, yeah. And I think if you add a beach, um, oh, not in England, 
in my world. <laughs> in your world. A, a beach somewhere very hot. <laughs> Most people's worlds, um, <laughs> it's fine, but yours, you know, it's got to be baldy. Right, uh, okay, it would be uh, perfect. Maybe yeah. on. Pascal yeah. recommended fried chicken. Now, you know, again, this was another really popular opinion. It has um, never occurred to me no, fried chicken. No, exactly. It's totally fried new chicken. on us. So thank you, Pascal. We'll definitely be trying it. You know, you can see the logic, actually. What, your box of, of KFC and, and, well, your and chicken flavours and, and then you're that lovely, crunchy, you know, battery type. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I can see. So, so uh, bin two pads, though, added. You know, I, I used to think fish and chips was the ultimate, but now I know it doesn't get better than champagne and fried chicken. You see, they're on it. Uh, like Buffalo it. Check Jones. Right Heavens, this, is a, this is a complete love you know, it. new... Love it with fried chicken. This is a proper fried international chicken. debate. Love it with fried chicken. A bucket of dirty bird <laughs> and a good dry biscuity sparkling is a match made in heaven. I think that's a brilliant tweet. And then I finally, Edith it. Lai wrote in to say... Um, with Kentucky Fried Chicken, with, with KFC, KFC brilliant, you know, also yeah. Blonde de Blanc with cured salmon, Blonde de Noir with Xinjiang fried cumin lamb. I wow, love that's quite all specific, those, isn't all it? those yeah. three suggestions. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, moving slightly more on that on that note, Steve said Chinese. Yeah, that keeping it, it simple. Keep it Steve. simple. No, no, nothing Steve. specific, just um, Chinese. Ruth said brie. Uh, Haley sort of uh, echoed that saying soft cheese board um, mm-hmm. and in fact cheese did get a fair smattering of support didn't I it? think I fair think. enough so yeah. you know yeah, we, yeah. we should We're be trying this out a little bit more uh, the Cotswolds yeah. wine guy said properly mature crunchy cheddar and crackers ooh mm. now now I'm going to move to something slightly different <laughs> Ruben got the party started I would mm. say by mm. recommending popcorn yes and then Nyan took it to another level by saying truffled popcorn with aged mm. Blanc de Blanc is a great combination Winner, yeah. I mean, that, that although, just although, kind of although, wait, 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 because Simon went one further, oh, yeah. and he said truffle and parmesan popcorn. Yes, no, I mean, I think um, truffle and parmesan popcorn is about as maximum wine tweet as you can get um <laughs> simon but you know I, that is uh, epic thank you for I all those bizarre uh so but jessica also opened the floodgates i thought when she wrote salmon wellington taboulet have i pronounced that right taboulet uh, pretty much i think um, yeah antipasti moussaka and greek salad Gosh, that's quite, quite a, quite a quite smorgasbord yeah. there of uh, that, that's like a, that's different like a, options. I did query yeah. a few with it's a, her. It was a buffet, isn't it? <laughs> but she's, you know, she's uh, tried the Now, Andy Evans came in, as we said, with eggs. Mm. Uh, but he, oh, yeah. he then said, or is that just because I like it for breakfast? It's just, it's just Who excuse, cares, Andy? Who Andy, cares? It's, an it's a great idea. Um, to, and then uh, just, to, just to sort of bring a, a dampener, but not a dampener, I think uh, maybe a sense of perspective into the, 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 the debate, uh, curbing the general enthusiasm. Gareth said, sorry to be boring. But I am really not persuaded about champagne with food. Mm. I've attended a few special dinners with champagnes with each course, which were what, I, what we were talking about. But they didn't work for me. The bubbles get in the way. In the, the way. Yeah, the best I find. Uh, the best I find with nothing more than very light canapes, ideally gougere. Now that's where we are absolutely of one mind with you, Gareth, because yeah. we love gougere, oh, and man. I think with a good, probably. Champagne with a bit of age can't get better than that, can you? Oh, a warm, um... warm, cheesy ball and uh, and a glass of vintage fizz. <laughs> oh, and they, and they seem to be able to do them in champagne in a way which is hard to replicate. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best that we can true. do is your nice, warm, yes. cheesy straws. Yeah, but but no, uh, no, no gougere is gougere. Oh, anyway, yeah, yeah. Neil yeah. took up yeah. this uh, baton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah wasn't yeah. going to be discouraged. Yeah. My mother-in-law makes the best smoked mackerel pate for the starter on Christmas mm. Day with Graham Beck from South Africa. So magical together. I love that, Neil. Thank love you for it. that. I just love oh, it. What a thought. And Graham Beck some, makes some great value sparkling They do, wine, actually. Yeah, good, yeah, as you say, good value. Good value, South Africa. Um, Phil is, said, fizz with creamy pasta with black truffle slices. There with you as well, yeah. Yeah, oh dear, yeah, yeah, gosh. Now, Jens, perhaps... Uh, at the, oh, Jens? Yeah, oh, Jens, sorry. Could be Jens. Yes. I, I, I assume it's Jens. Yeah, Jens. It could be Jens. Um, perhaps, perhaps mindful of the time of year, I suppose, just... Said roast turkey. Yeah. And well, don't see why, why not? not. Why not? To borrow a bakery right and said really good vanilla ice cream. Um, now, this which is was, where I start to. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I think maybe they're thinking of the sweeter styles of champagne, which yeah. is cool. Uh, but I think there is this myth, isn't there, about champagne going with sweet foods, which often is, especially in France, isn't it? Yeah. Which we've come across. So, demi sec with, with sweet foods. But even no, then, I. Mean, I, I but, oh, well, you we think, well, we think demi sec would go yes, well. Yeah, a rich yeah. or a demi sec could mm. go well. And, and there are, we, there's some other opinions about that coming up. But I think there is this myth about, uh, about champagne. But apparently, according to Tom Stevenson and Essie in their 
great um, Champagne Encyclopedia. They said this myth, uh, you know, came about because originally Champagne had so much sugar, sugar in, in it, so yeah. much dosage, and that makes years sense. Ago, then it that did. actually people put it with sweet food in France, but yeah. because the styles changed now, yeah. and the sugar, there's not so much sugar in most wine styles. Champagne Hardly styles, any. But people in, in France most, still yes. have that association of, of Champagne as a sweet it, wine. That so put does it with make sweet sense, food, but they need, they need to move exactly. on. They need to move on. They need to move on. But you know, with a nice uh, demi sec, who knows? Yeah, well, as you're talking of demi-sec then, Sebastiano, um, demi-sec or riche styles mm. complement certain Indian or spicy Asian mm. foods. Another totally angle. agree. Mm. That's a good mm. idea. Mm. Uh, really, so really good sweet. shout. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I almost won a competition, I like this, by matching vintage Paul Roger rosé with roasted poulet de bresse, Perigord truffle sauce and puy lentils. Oh, man. Sebastiano, I mean, can I come for was, dinner, yeah. please? I mean, that just... Oh, that sounds yeah. really lovely, doesn't um, it? But, but what about this? Uh, Archie wrote in to say, my favourite ever match was Charles Heidsick, uh, 2004, I think, rosé with roast shoulder of salt marsh lamb. Uh, the savoury spice of the wine added a wonderful element to the meat and the bubbles and acidity cut through the fat wonderfully. And it is true that we think that rosé champagne mm. is a seriously underrated yeah. style. You know, it can be even really more complex is, yeah. uh, and food friendly. It than, can be than very normal. good with food. And uh, I think yeah, in a certain because of that like, red wine being yeah, added in there. Yeah, and so this sort of sushi, and sushi works very well with, with rosé. Mm. Um, but Laura Clay, again, is saying about the lamb thing, Louis Rodera rosé 1998 with rare lamb. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. And then Archie sort of uh, pop back in to say, Blonde Blanc is also brilliant at lifting a rich seafood bisque. Uh, I've encouraged guests to add a shot of the fizz to the bisque, and it's a game changer. I love, love that, that idea. I love that idea. I love <laughs> I'm not sure that I agree idea. with Why it, but not? I love it. Well, you, your bisque might be a little hot. So you stick in a little bit of your fizz. Why not? Oh, let's Why try not? It next Why time not? I do, now, I Paul Smith, I, I'm, I'm really liking this one. Crab souffle. Mm. The bubbles in the souffle work with the bubbles in the drink. Love it. And it's like tempura. They're thinking behind tempura as well, isn't it? A little yeah. Bit. Yes, I suppose so. Yes, in sparkling water yeah. and tempura. I think yeah, you, well, in a you know, the good tempura, you to get the really light batter, you'd mm. get that. You'd have sparkling mm. water or something sparkling, yeah, yeah. beer maybe. You and to come back to the, the sweet angle, Ruth Yates said, uh, "Paul Roger demi sec with apple crumble." We had oh, been to Padstow saying demi sec and pavlova any day. I mean, this is where I do start to 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 disagree. I'm okay. going to be honest. Yeah, I ju- I just don't even a demi sec. They're not sweet enough for me for my taste for sweet dessert. But even if you've got if let, pavlova, you often get with fruit, so you. You'd say demi sec with with summer berries would be a really nice match. Yeah, but I think that that meringue is anyway. Yeah, we, we will agree yeah. to depends disagree. Depends how much we'll meringue you have. Maybe if it's a fruit heavy pavlova. <laughs> I, I like I like my meringue. <laughs> oh yeah, well maybe that's the thing. Um, uh, then Bob Lindo popped to say Camel Valley rose fizz and lobster. Oh, yeah. Never never want to miss a good brownie oh, opportunity. Why? Are, why yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rose fizz and lobster, you know, and chips. Yeah, come on. Oh gosh, yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. What else have we got? Um, yeah. uh, native Helford oysters and Black Queen scallops. Another great suggestion. And Vino, Vino Rankino said, pint of prawns. Simple. Oh, brilliant. I love the idea of brilliant. a pint of prawns. Now, the next one is quite extreme. So, Jeff Mitchell, Taco Bell, and DP, Don Perignon. Yeah. To which Chet Flynn seems to have replied, Take that thought out of my mind. <laughs> there is something brilliant, though, isn't it? It's about a bit the, weird. The, 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 the putting together of, you know, a drink that's as hoity-toity as, as champagne with just a particular DP, most, you know. Like KFC or Taco yeah, Bell. Yeah. There's something quite... <laughs> and Fish and Chips is in the same lane, isn't it? There's something quite fun about it. There is, there is. Something no, very um, decadent. Uh, yeah. Peter McCombie, our fellow master of wine, I would say, you know, he he's uh, obviously a uh, well-known uh, consultant for a lot of restaurants. And he said he remembers uh, working with the Cinnamon Club, that great restaurant. Um, did some, And he, he said, did some great pairs with prestige cuvées back in the day, e.g. Krug 88 with Bengali-style rabbit and DP Rosé with Rajasthani venison. I would have I loved want to go. To I want that. to. Can we recreate that, Peter? Because that yeah. just sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's keep moving on. So, Sarah Stein, I only drink champagne. I know I'm a brat. So I love it with all food. No, you're not a brat. Sarah. Well, that's you not just, so brattish, just, is it? No, I think like you're very Susie. easy going. You're very like Susie. Simple say, taste. Say hi to Rick this Christmas. <laughs> uh, also goes really well with seafood, of course, which in your world is probably uh, exactly <laughs> what you need. Uh, Richard Given said, uh, surely the right answer is lobster rolls. Lobster roll. Where did we have a lobster roll? I've had a lobster roll somewhere. I'm sure you have, sweetheart. Where have I had a lobster roll? And it was, was probably a, yeah, incredible. Crab stick sandwich. Incredible. Uh, um, yeah, what else have we got? Also, rotisserie chicken, ideally from a French outdoor market. I love that idea. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. Um, beautiful. Robert said a young blanc de blanc or a non vintage is good with duck, confit, pork belly, scotch eggs, etc. So I'm now that just could be so very 
We needed a mention of, of scotch eggs. Scotch eggs. It could be very useful right now. Right now, it? scotch eggs. What goes champagne. for your substantial meal? Scotch eggs and a young Blanc de Blanc. Go for it. Fabulous. Lovely. Yes, there's lockdown done. James, champagne and cold rare roast beef is an absolute treat. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simon said bayota bayota, which I imagine is a kind of very posh ham. It, it is. It's like the Iberico, yeah. Iberico yeah, ham from Spain, yeah, yeah. which is just yeah. fabulous, isn't it? Now, um, self-sufficient schools wrote in to say cold lobster salad, smoked salmon sandwiches, oysters, canapes, all very nice with bubbles. But I love a glass with proper fish and chips, mushy peas and a wally by the sea. Now, if I say to you, Wally, what? would you know what a Wally is? No, I would not have a clue what no, a Wally is. So my asked. friend is Wally, but that's, <laughs> yes, that's we have about a lovely as, friend and Wally. there's where's Wally, but, yeah, about, but that's but, about but, my but limit. A Wally. So, so, so they then followed a massive sort of sub-thread of well, Wally. What, what's a Wally, I said, you know, uh, which led uh, via Mike Reed. Do you remember Mike Reed, the actor from EastEnders? Yes. Legendary actor. (laughs) And apparently he popularised popularised the phrase or the the word. Um, Um, Apparently it's a gherkin. You know, a pickle gherkin you get in fish and chip shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Apparently it's new to me. So I've learned something from this debate. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and so finally, um, yeah, yeah. sufficient self self sufficient uh, yeah. schools. I think after that debate, they wanted to come up with something. Um, else. For they followed up with cold, thinly sliced roast roast beef in a sandwich with horseradish, or the ultimate Christmas Day evening sandwich: cold turkey, honey roast ham, and pork stuffing with the finest crusty white loaf and a cold glass of fizz. Wonderful, with a wally, of course. There we go. I mean, let's just leave it there. I think all of that deserves a sting. Right, so I think all of this food chat has clearly given us the munchies. Uh, why wouldn't it? So before we go on to our top tips for festive drinking, I think we're just going to have a short pause to talk about sausage rolls. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, we, we, we sort of realised, didn't we, that we, we haven't done a food, food mm. bit for a while, so we wanted to do something on that front. But we were also very mindful that for many people, this will be a very much a simplified Christmas where mm. simple pleasures are are the key and sometimes even doing things outside uh, as we know is safer than doing the traditional big family yeah. meetups yeah. inside yeah i mean my mum suggested doing a long walk and then a short picnic with a hot soup and a, a and sausage rolls which you know in, in a normal year would sound a bit mad but this year <laughs> you know it's about being outside it's about being safe and it's yeah. about being simple and simple pleasures isn't it so that made yeah. us well me really i'll be honest you know think of the really simple recipe we have for making homemade sausage rolls. Absolutely. It's actually, um, well, the inspiration comes from Lorraine Pascal in her Baking Made Easy. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah. It's a lovely, Thanks, simple, simple sausage roll recipe. Brilliant, Lorraine. It is it's um, super and simple. And you, so. you can kind of um, jazz it up however you want, really. Um, yeah, yeah. You know. And mm. what we'll do is we'll put the recipe uh, out on, on our Instagram. But essentially, it involves some ready-made puff pastry. Um, you then have some sausage meat. I mean, we use caramelised red onion sausages, mm. but you could use chorizo or just plain pork sausages, whatever you like. Add a bit of lemon zest, a bit of chi- a few chilli flakes, um, a bit of egg wash, you know, roll it all up and stick it in the oven for for 25 minutes at 200 degrees C. But this, that's all on the, we'll put, put that oh, on, on, our, on the recipe. And warm from it's just oven. gorgeous. Oh, it's just the yeah, best. Thing. Nothing like it. I mean, it's, forget shop bought sausage rolls. This is the way forward because yeah. it's so simple. And you get and to choose your so own delicious. filling. You can put exactly. whatever you want in there. You, you know, can. what do you most like? Nutella. <laughs> No, I'm joking, but <laughs> not not with that sausage. Just revolting, um, actually. Yeah. But um, no, no, really, truly, um, I think um, it, it's it's just a lovely thing to do. That, you fun, know, you can do with and the then the key is what wine. To. What wine goes with? Absolutely. Yeah, so this yeah. is where we launch into our festive wine recommendations by way of our yeah. of a show finale. And actually, a lot of Christmas wine recommendations, you know, there are, tend to be sort of sausage or sausage meat or something in that vein. <laughs> something sausage in there on yeah. your sort of turkey plate or whatever yeah. it is you end yeah. up doing. So yeah, yeah, thinking yeah. of wines that go with those kind of flavors, not. I think, and they go. It goes really well with reds and whites, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Anyway, so, come enough on of then. sausage um, rolls. So the way we want to yeah, do is we sort of. We've- uh, alternative to the classics, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We sort of thought, you know, usually you would have a glass of fizz maybe, you might have mm-hmm. some white wine, some red wine, some sweet or, or fortified wine, but there are classics, aren't there? And we're going we're gonna to talk briefly about the classic and then give you some really unusual and different recommendations so you can do something different this yeah. year. So we've got some sort of generic recommendations for uh, everyone uh, around the world and then, mm-hmm. of course, some more specific ones, especially in the UK. But obviously yeah. you probably could find some of these wines uh, in, in, in markets all around the world and I if not of course you can find alternatives yeah. um, similar just some ideas yeah. really isn't it so, so the obvious yeah. 
Fizz choice. Fizz, of fizz. course. We talked about it at length today already. Is is champagne. champagne yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is great. And you know, we'd never discourage anybody from buying a lovely bottle of champagne. Mm. However, there are some amazing alternatives. Oh, um New World sparkling wines. Mm. So um certainly, you know, you could look at California, you yeah. could look at Australia, New Zealand. Mm. Um, we particularly like the Louis Rodera Quartet non vintage, yeah. which yeah, uh, is from California. Mm. It's about twenty three pounds at Majestic. And then Another wine that I love. I was in um, Australia at the end of 2018 and uh, and tasted quite a bit of House of Arras and uh, the again majestic have House of Arras Brut Elite, which is mm. Tasmanian and 20 quid a bottle. And again, fabulous, fabulous drinking. That one's majestic too, isn't it? And then of course, um, you know, we talk about New World, and then we need to say New New World because then of course English fizz. Yeah. You know, especially if you're in the UK, do try, if you haven't tried already, try some. If you we're have, going to be drinking just English fizz, pile absolutely. In. You know, I mean, the likes of Night Timber, Hattingley, Chapel Down, Ridgeview, and Gusbourne are the big names, aren't they? They are. Um, but you also really important. Look out for your local vineyards. I think that's it. I mean, smaller you names, know, interesting ones. We could sit here, but it would take the rest of the day to name all those amazing local or smaller producers in the UK. Mm, mm. Just look for whoever is most local to you. Find a vineyard, and if they're making sparkling wine, try it. Or whoever you know. If you've got a local wine merchant or a local shop that has some local suggestions, go mm. with them. Go with mm. their suggestion. Try it out. It's just, you know, the power of discovery at yeah. Christmas. Why not? And then um, if you want something a little bit um, less expensive and you, you're a Prosecco fan, I love Prosecco, um, something that's organic, Aldi has a seven ninety nine organic Prosecco Castellor, which is it's in a really nice little bottle, little squat bottle. And it's a really good, really good bottle, a great value for money Prosecco. Mm-hmm. So moving on to white wine, um, obvious choice. What I don't know. It depends. It depends what would be uh, obvious, where you are. Yeah. You are but well, Chablis, yeah. I guess, I would be an obvious would, choice. Sancerre, yeah. those sort of Sancerre, names. Sancerre, Chablis are those sort of slightly um, the classics, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or white Burgundy in general, I suppose. Yeah, yeah exactly. Be, which is you know, considered wouldn't, a classic. Wouldn't stop anyone having that. Um, no, no. But the alternatives are come in many shapes and sizes, don't they? Actually, when you start to think about it, there's quite a few things you can yeah. choose. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the the thing to think about here is what is your white wine for? So if it's to go with your starter and you're having maybe quite a light starter, you might be having smoked fish, like we talked about, smoked salmon. You might be having um, something like, you know, if you wanted something more vegetarian, mozzarella and and, mm. and basil and, and avocado, sort of trickle or salad. Who knows? You, but but they tend to be lighter dishes. And so, yes, something like um, a Sancerre, but an alternative to that would be a New Zealand Sauvignon. But I think what we were focusing on here today was the idea of having a white wine maybe with your main course, um, whether that's yeah, turkey just a versatile or goose thing, really. or, or a vegetarian, or, you know, um, something that can cope with alternative. a lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. something full flavoured. So, you know, yeah. I mean, we'll put one good start. We, we, New World, we mentioned New World Fizz, but New World Chardonnay um, with, with subtle oaking, you know. Um, so, you know, Australia, New Zealand, Chile, particular. Um, we like the creation Chardonnay, didn't we? From um, South Africa. From South Africa, yeah. which is about eleven pounds uh, majestic and you know the Vas Felix Chardonnay at nine ninety yeah. nine. That's from, pretty from widely Australia. available. Um, um yeah. So you know the, uh, You the, could also you could also look to the Rhone Valley. Mm, um so awesome. there's a lot of um Viognier, Marsan, Roussan. Those are often very, very nice rounded, sort of yellow fruited apricotty styles that have got a little bit more weight that would work very nicely with yeah. a, a and if you're not a big fan a, of acidity, if you don't food. like sort of tanginess and acidity then go for those yeah, they are they're very su- succulent. They're gonna have softer acidity and quite aren't soft they? aren't they um equally the sort of richer styles of italian white mm-hmm. you know uh, can oh, gosh, be really yeah. good what did we buy the other day the enama one yeah enama uh, vignetti um, di foscarino suave classico that is really nice because it's got that slight golden yeah. note to oh, it to the flavor just uh, lovely yeah. Actually, yeah some really good suaves oh yeah, the when they're ones. good. Yeah, we're not talking Pierre here, though, a, a sort of a light, cheap, no, um, this is proper, own label. It's like 20 quid or something, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, um, well, but if you do want a bargain, uh, we did love, um, from our, from the Wine Festival, with the matching with the uh, yeah. Rocket, a Cook's Tour, uh, the, uh, the, the, truffle, the truffle and mushroom risotto. risotto. You had that... Um, um, Vermentino from Vermentino Sicily. from Sicily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. £6.50 from M&S. £6.50 from yeah. M&S. And that was really lovely. Not quite as rich as some of the wines we're talking about here, but... Again, if you're it looking was for a very versatile, really option. lovely, lovely value option. Talking about um, uh, some more premium, I mean, we do love a white Rioja. A good oaked white Rioja. Yeah. Because white Rioja comes in all shapes and sizes, doesn't it? And some of mm. them are very um, relatively neutral and fresh and unoaked, but a good oaky, mm. perhaps Rioja with a bit of age. Something like um, Vigna Tondonia, mm. lovely. That that mm. that mm. can be quite expensive. It depends on which vintage you get. Um, or the Capiania. 
Have I said Capellania? Marquis de Murrieta. Murrieta. The Reserva. Which yeah. um, is lovely. That's that's the Wine Society have that, but it's pretty widely available um, in sort of higher end independence, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. It's about, about 20, 20 25 pounds. Yeah. 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 And then and then we should come out again to Eng- England. Yeah. To our absolutely. fair Isles, you know, English Chardonnay. Give it a try. Some of the like top English still. Chardonnays. Chapel Down Kits Coty. Uh, Gasborne Guinevere, yeah. um, Black Simpsons. Book Pygmalion. We've just tasted. Yeah, we just tried the Black Book, which, which yep, is a um, new uh, release from them, yeah. twenty eighteen. I mean, they're not cheap, are um, they? They're, they're all, all about twenty five, thirty pounds. Yeah. yeah but, but this I mean, is this Christmas, if ever, uh, you know, it may oh, be a time word. to drink oh, a little bit less, word. but treat yourself. Oh, we need to treat ourselves. Treat yourself to something really special. Moving on, um, reds then as well. Reds, yeah. So we would probably say um, Pinot Noir is an ideal great variety to be drinking on Christmas Day. It's a classic, Day. isn't it? It's, it's a suggests. classic. So mm. Burgundy would be the classic region. Mm. So we thought, okay, right, where else could you go for Pinot Noir that's mm. really quite mm. different um, and or great value? And so so what did we come up with? Yeah, so, um, well, so there's a couple of Central Targa ones. There's the Tesco Finest Central Targa Pinot Noir, 2018, which is about 13 quid. It's the Nanny Goat. Is that Waitrose? Nanny um, Goat is Waitrose, £20. 20 pounds. So, so they are really good... New Zealand down in the South Island yeah. and Central Otago quite Pinots tend quite to be robust. quite robust. They're uh, darker we, we fruited. We obviously had the two paddocks Pinot Noir which we yeah. loved. That with, was a bit with more Sam Neill. At 35 quid this year and that was just delicious. That would be an epic Christmas uh, festive wine, wouldn't it? Now staying, um, in, staying in, in Europe, German Pinot. I mean, that mm, is a, yeah. an area to explore. I would say Germany and Austria but probably Germany in particular. Germany in particular. Um, there is, we, we, well, we bought recently some Louis Guntram um, yes, we did. Pinot Noir which was Lovely from Waitrose. From 14 Waitrose. Quid, isn't it? Yeah. Then there's a, a, a Walt Pinot Noir, Walt. which I particularly like. Walt Pinot Noir from the Faltz, yeah. um, that Soho Wine have, and other independents. Mm. Um, that's uh, about ten or twelve pounds. So said, not not crazy. You said Austria as well. Austria as well. Yeah. Mm. When I was, um, I did an, uh, an Austrian tasting last mm. year. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry, earlier this year actually. Gosh, time's gone, hasn't it? Uh, and th- there weren't loads, but the one that I would recommend was Pitnauer. Uh, Pitnauer 2018. Burgenland Pinot Noir, so Burgenland's yeah. kind of yeah. Austria's area, mostly yeah. for reds, uh, and it was really kind of funky and leathery and stalky style. Um, it's biodynamic and Where'd it's uh, imported by Clark Foister okay. Wine, so you'd yeah. have to sort right. of yeah, yeah. contact them about that. But that was really interesting. interesting, interesting. interesting. We, probably, we probably throw some alternatives in there as well. I mean, Tasmania, you know, that's your yeah. bit your field, but, but there's some beautiful uh, oh. Pinots from yeah, Tasmania. Yeah, it's hard Toll to get Puddle's beyond. A great name. Toll Puddle. Um, Very hard to get beyond that. So that's about fifty quid. That's that's available all yeah. over the world yeah. and it is beautiful we do love the giant step stuff I know it's not Tasmania yeah. but that's uh, um, we do nice yes uh, uh, Joseph well. Cromie makes some yeah. lovely Pinot um, uh, there's a there's a very little known one mm. Sailor Seeks Horse down mm. right down mm. in the south of Tasmania okay. nice, nice. beautiful um, so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, Chile uh, we can't not mention Chile they make some great value Pinots and some really really good ones I mean the Conchitore Corte Marcello Pinot Noir from Limerie um it's about nine pounds fifty at the wine society. Yeah, That's great. That's that lovely, is great kind of value. Intermediate, and yeah. Really lovely Not wine. Not breaking the bank. Really lovely um, wine. And you know, you can also go England as well. You know, the Gasborn Pinots are a thing of beauty. Again, they're not they're not cheap. They're going to no. be sort of thirty five pounds. But then, you know, if you compare that to Burgundy, that's absolutely normal. Um, and beautiful wine, beautiful yeah. wine, beautifully packaged. You know, if you want to stay with England, you know, a, a really good English Pinot, why not? And and you twenty. Moving, getting a bit more esoteric and moving away from Pinot, but not in hugely dissimilar. You know, I put in a shout for the um, delicious Villa Borghetti Valpolicella Ripasso, which we did as part of our wine festival online masterclass mm. with Majestic. Yeah. Um, I think it's about 13 quid or so on, yeah. on the special offer. It's just gorgeous. It's very good. You oh, cannot... So good. Well, I defy anybody to really hate that wine because yeah. it's just so likeable. It's yeah, like it's really black cherries and mm, but beautifully mm. balanced and it's got a yeah. lovely, um, colourful sort of, label. It, it would brighten yeah. up any Christmas yeah. table. It's almost very sort of like funky Beaujolais territory, which again would be a really good, yeah, another, yeah, good, yeah. good alternative here. Now, uh, I'm going to finish on one yeah, crazy on. wine, oh, a oh, totally yeah, crazy okay. wine that yeah. I tasted this mm. year at the Wine Society. Um, and it's a, a Pinot d'Oni, a Vin de France, a Garance, un classe Mm-hmm. Uh, by Bois Brisson. I'm doing my best French here. Yeah. So it's from the Loire Valley. Um, it's £23. Uh, mm-hmm. So Pinot Doni is not related to Pinot Noir. Um, and it belongs to, well, I, I had to look this up because I really didn't know, but it belongs to the Messile Ampelographic group. Um, but it's just 
such a great wine. If you like a wine that is, it's very pale. But in a Pinot it's style, pe- in a Noir style. Well, it's it's very pale, mm. uh, peppery, gamey, leathery, farmyardy. Um, you've got to like wines that are really out there. Sounds like um, just my cup of tea. And I, I, I loved it, oh, loved it. Okay, that's something a little bit different. That one. So moving on, final step, the, the, the kind of um, pudding arena. Pudding arena. Well, I'm going to stick my hand up straight away for Madeira. Yeah. Madeira, Madeira. But but come on. So so the obvious choices are sort of port so which I think yeah get the obvious a lot. choice. So we should have so said that first. Didn't we? Yes, yes. So just that. moving beyond Madeira, that. Um, I respect Madeira. your your choice I mean, there. Just yeah. because you know it, it smells and tastes like a Christmas pudding. Um, it would go brilliantly with a cheese board. It would go brilliantly with I chocolate. Pl- it would I think go it's brilliantly with, with pudding. I think, it's, I think it's too much with the pudding. I think it's oh, too sweet. No, well it depends which. Level of Madeira you buy. Madeira. No, that's very true. But equally, um, you There's know, having it as a little sniffer. A little sharpener at yeah. eleven in the morning, as elevens is. And uh, if you could only manage, well, elevens. <laughs> <laughs> if you could only manage a small glass, it'll just keep for the next twenty years. Well, that's won't the other it? thing as well. So, um, any one specific ones you recommend? Um, yeah, there was. Um, yes, I think. Well, I'm going to go back to the the wine society again. They had a, a Blandy's Malmsey Collator Single Harvest 1999 um, at forty eight pounds. So it's quite mm. expensive. Uh, but Waitrose has a Blandy's that is uh, slightly less. Uh, £25, pounds, mm. and that's um, a Boile, 15-year-old okay. Boile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's so lots yeah. of alternatives as well, aren't there? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Especially in sort of the sweet wine territory. So, so oh, goodness, yes. Um, I'd suggest maybe a better value, the De Bortoli Botrytis Semillon that we yeah. uh, had the other day with, uh, this, I guess, about 10 quid for a half at Majestic. Yeah. Um, Something like... You know, um, Terry's the... chocolate orange, Terry's white chocolate <laughs> orange for that is epic. It was heaven. Um, <laughs> Something like a Rutherglen pudding. Muscat from Australia. You yeah, know, the, uh, the Campbell's Rutherglen Muscat we've always loved. Um, it's about sort of £13 pounds for half mm. a bottle. And if you can go posh on those, the better, you know, yeah. the more age, the oh, they're, they're great, aren't they? And then you've got things like Tokai. Mm-hmm. Tokai's always yeah. a lovely oh, shout. It's, it's you know, so good. It tends to come in little bottles, doesn't it? Yeah, so you don't you have don't too much. much. And it's just glorious. And it, because the acidity is always lovely and it's kind of a really kind of, whoa, it grabs you by the lapels wine. Yeah. Um, so, so lovely. Definitely a Tokai. Um, Reef Salt Ombre as well is always a good shout alternative to kind of Tawny Port. Yeah. Uh, what's the one the Wine Society have at the moment? Is it the. They have the 1998 at the moment. Like, but I think they've also got some really old ones. One, and I'm going to forget which vintage. It's mm. something like 1959. Oh, really? Ridiculously old vintage of that. So if you want to go crazy and get something absolutely in, in sensational, you some, some you, for well, a for birthday, some, yes, recently. for a rather special birthday, we won't mention which, which it vintage it was. It was, <laughs> it was historic, though, and it was you know and, and the price. Mm, mm. Well. <laughs> Thank you. Really Moving on. The price is, you know, it's it's great. These are sort of like what, 20, yeah. 40, 50 quid a bottle? Yeah. But they're things that have been aged for aged decades. For decades. And you think I know. It's so yeah. so you worth trying. No way. Now you did try uh, just moving on slightly to some sherry. You did try a quite an incredible sherry uh, um, recently, didn't oh, that, you? Oh, that what the uh, the Cortado one. No, uh, sorry, the, the Williams and Humbert that was at um Waitress, which is an Amontillado blend that's actually a sweet Amontillado, but done brilliantly yes yes no absolutely um and that's about what 30 quid yeah yeah um, so if you want to want to go for you know something that your your mum might normally buy an own label version of, a, of an amontillado that's slightly sweet yeah. this is the polar opposite yet it's still sweet. slightly sweet but it's, it's proper a really stuff proper, um and but the one i was thinking one. was the palo cortado that i tried at mns the, the very rare palo cortado non-vintage it's a half bottle but it's only six quid and it's just and it, so it's important to say it's not sweet cheap. it's not sweet it's got a touch. It's of got a touch, but it's, but it's just so, so, yeah. so good. Give yourself a treat this Christmas, you know, something like that. Can't, quid. can't say more, oh, can we? Really, we've got a final little thing to say, we though, do, haven't we? We do, we do, and, and you know, we, we've been building up to this. We have, and we almost don't want to do it. Really, say we've got a wine of the year, but I think we have to say this because we have drunk and bought and drunk so much of this wine and loved every single bottle. Um, if you like a lightly oaked beautiful Chardonnay that will go with just about anything, then Vas Felix Chardonnay from the Margaret River in Australia has been our wine of the year in it that has. sense. And ever since it? you visited the estate, you know, you, yeah. you love the wines. We've, we've Made by well. Virginia Wilcock and just fabulous. But just, it's under a tenner, people. Yeah. And it's just sensational drinking. Yeah. So that is our... Well, it's you, under a tenner on offer. Under a tenner on offer, that. sorry. But, but it, that's our yeah. wine of the year. It wine is, of the it year. Is. So I think that's it for our last yeah. show of 2020. Mm. Um, thank you so much for joining us during what's been a... It's been a weird, mm. testing, stressful uh, year, but, but also one, I think we can safely say, that's had the odd... Welcome highlight every now and then, just yeah. occasionally. Yeah, sometimes you've had to look hard for it, but they they they, they can be there. <laughs> for us, I think launching this podcast has been the most amazing 
adventure, hasn't it? it really? Has. And 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 we're so glad that you guys have have joined us on this journey. So thank you very much indeed. Um, and you know we look forward to many more fun adventures in 2021. As we well, do indeed. We? So here's to wishing you um, a delicious Christmas and end mm. of the year. And we're going to be taking a break, um, but we'll be back in January with a bang. Uh, so until then, please do leave us the gift mm-hmm. of a festive rating and review <laughs> if you can. Uh, we'd yeah. really appreciate it. Thank you for listening. Stay safe and cheers.